Well, you see, life's not black and white. And many people um, with, with strongly held views on abortion are, are in the black area or the white area. But I believe the vast amount of people are in the grey area in between. We have in Ireland a serious history of um, neglecting women's health, women's rights. We still have in our constitution that the women's place is in the home. You know, there's this sort of notion that it's like irresponsible floozies going out and just having sex with random people and they end up pregnant and those they don't deserve. Who are any of us to judge? How do we know any circumstance in which people are? And, you know, people have a very narrow view. But the narrative has been opened up in Ireland. The political dynamite issues here are mainly probably uh, have to do with religious issues. So the referendum that we did have on was same-sex marriage. That was a pretty big issue here. Um, when one of the things that the Constitution, um, sorry, the Citizens Assembly is doing now is repeal the eighth, um, which is abortion. Um, that's also a very politically sensitive issue here in in Ireland. A lot of the points were kind of very. Many people would regard them as archaic. Many people would regard them as very important and would make their electoral decisions solely based on that point. So they're very, very divisive issues here, although they might seem strange for an international audience. Take my hand, Lord. Take my hand, Lord. All along. If you're trying to win a seat, in a certain county or electoral area. And this is a very important topic to 5% or 10% of people living in that area. And they say, I will not vote for you if you do anything with this at all, if you approve a referendum, you're going to lose your seat. So what we have in a way is a lot of people who don't want to discuss it or, or want to keep this issue off the agenda because they're afraid of losing their seat. And what that means is effectively a small minority of people can, uh, you know, keep an item off the agenda. I think this issue in Ireland could never have gotten to the point we're at today were it not for the Citizens' Assembly. I don't, I think we would have been years getting there if we ever got there. <laughs> Ireland has one of the most restrictive um, uh, regimes against abortion in Europe. You know, one of the most restrictive. Um, and that clearly that's not a position that can, can last. You know, we're already being condemned by international agencies for the particular position that we're, we find ourselves in as a republic. And this goes right back to the original referendum in 1983 to insert an anti-abortion clause into our constitution in the first instance. So now having ha had it inserted into our constitution, we've been trapped ever since with that. And there've been various efforts throughout the decades since 1983 to try and try and clarify, resolve, or improve um, the situation as, as it currently stands. And none of them have worked. And it's, it, in many ways, this is the best chance we now have as a result of the deliberations of the Citizens' Assembly to finally get some political momentum on changing our constitution. So my name is Louise, I'm 39, I'm a mum of three and I'm a self-employed uh, events manager. My name is John Long, I'm uh, 56 years old. I come from the second city in Ireland, which is Cork. Um, my name's David Kiao, I'm a 47 year old truck driver. I live in Kildare Town. I'm, I'm Noreen O'Flynn, I'm a 22 year old student from Cork in the south of Ireland. I, I was quite afraid um, coming the first day. I was nervous. There's 98 other people that I have never met before. And we all kind of, I walked in and, and I, I met people kind of similar age and we just got all talking. We were all kind of 
apprehensive about it, but we kind of fell into it quite quickly. It, it took place over a period of five months, five weekends probably of 15 or 20 hours of, re, of, of sessions, papers, debate, and then dozens and dozens of hours of research and reading and uh, analysis. So I would say we probably put a couple of hundred hours of, of, of total time into it, which is probably more than any parliamentary party committee would have put into us. So we're probably the best informed amateurs in the country on this topic at the moment. It's been a very difficult process, I'll be honest. It hasn't been a walk in the park. Um, you know, the, the, some of the sessions were very difficult. Um, the energy has been very tough. You know, it's been, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not an easy topic. Um, and some of the presentations were very difficult to listen to. But, um, but yeah, no, I think as a, as a group, I think we've, we've managed to... I suppose, support each other through that. Unlike some of the debates that have taken place in referendum in the past in Ireland, uh, the Citizens' Assembly was very respectful and, uh, and, and uh, very congenial to everybody's opinion. So there was no major arguments or disputes here at the Citizens' Assembly, even though there was serious disagreements, as there would always be on this subject. Yeah. Um, I come in pro-choice, OK? But I came in pro-choice like most citizens of the country. Um, uninformed or informed my own way. But we found that some of the sessions that we had, we were given legal, we were given medical, we were given ethical, moral, religious, um, and then social as well. And then the advocacy, advocacy groups as well, we had all of them too. But I found that, uh, first of all, that some of the sessions, like the legal and the medical, were head melting because there was so much information. And I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a doctor. So we didn't understand half of it. So that was like, how am I going to process this? But the mechanism that they had set up with the, with the assembly, how it was done, the question and answer, round table discussions and everything, and the uh, uh, presenters of the speeches and that hung around and answered your question. And it wasn't a case that it was a stupid question. It didn't have to be a stupid question, or it could be a stupid question. It was answered. But I, you always felt at the end of it, you understood what it was that you were saying. I thought I knew a lot about it, but I, I've learned that it's not just, it wasn't just about abortion. There was there was a whole other side to to the Eighth Amendment that I had never really really thought of coming up to it, which is just general health care for women. I wouldn't say that the process has changed my view terribly much, but it has significantly deepened my understanding of the topic, of I suppose the legal framework for it, the medical framework, and then the social framework of uh, the implications of the Eighth Amendment. So, uh, so yeah, my understanding would have increased exponentially. For myself personally, I probably would have been in the middle. You know, not I wouldn't have been a, a pro-life, your typical pro-life position. I would have been in the middle where I would have been strongly in favour of Ireland liberalising its abortion laws. Uh, to take in uh, topics like fetal, fatal, arbor, malady, rape, incest, you know, uh, risk to the life and the health of the mother, and so on and so forth. But as as the time went on, and as we were getting more and more information, and as I, it was totally fact-based, unbiased, totally fact, I saw myself moving, and I think a lot of the people actually did here, I was surprised, started moving to a pro-choice position, to the extent that we surprised the whole country when we came, when we voted at the end of, of, of that uh, section, that we voted for radically liberalising the abortion laws in Ireland. So there's no certainty at this particular moment in time. There's no certainty about what the outcome will be on the abortion question. The Citizens' Assembly has produced a very well-considered report. Uh, I think it surprised all observers, it's safe to say, in terms of the, um, how far the Citizens' Assembly want to take the liberalising of our abortion legislation in this country. That's all right.
My name is Jonathan Victory. I'm a filmmaker and I've been doing some journalist and activist work around the Constitutional Convention, the Citizens' Assembly, around all the political reform issues happening in Ireland. I was in college when the financial crisis was unfolding in Ireland and at the end of 2010 there was a decision that Ireland would enter a bailout program with the EU and the IMF and th this was being signed off by a government that was the most unpopular government in the history of the state and something felt so wrong about there being uh, all this debt incurred from a corrupt banking sector and these decisions being made at very high level like no deference like to citizens in terms of a referendum or anything. There was an election called at the start of 2011 and around that time in Ireland we saw the emergence of lots of groups that were campaigning for political reform or institutional reform. They were looking at basically like how did we get into this mess. It's, in, it's hard to describe it today just how bad it was, really how scary it was to live through. And we were in the teeth of the worst economic crisis in our history. Various parts of the academic community seem to be getting involved in debates about the crisis, particularly the economists. So I was one of a small group of political scientists who decided that we try and emulate what the economists seem to be doing. So we had a blog that had already been established by others, but we sort of took it on much more proactively as a group called politicalreform.ie. And we started to promote the idea of citizen-oriented debates about political reform. Citizens, when you weave them to these, uh, you know, assemblies without much in the way of control uh, over top of them, they don't actually make crazy, reckless decisions. And there have been assemblies in other areas of the world, too. I mean, there have been assemblies in Canada, for example, on electoral reform. Actually, they get together and they talk and they come to compromises and they do consider things. So there's not really a major mystery of how to do this. You just randomly select some people, which we already do anyway when we, when we do jury service. Uh, you put them in hotel rooms for a couple of weekends or however long it takes and see what comes out of it. It's not just, say, a particular type of people that have gone to college and they've studied something and they're all making views and you get to hear what the ordinary people, the people that it affects on the ground, how they feel about something, what they would like to change about it, and then go about it in a political manner after gaining all of the information that they're going to be gaining from the Citizens' Assembly. If you're cynical about your pol politician's ability to change legislation, pass legislation, or come up with legislation, but if there's an issue that's burning to the, your society as, in, in general, have an assembly. So what I hope to see in coming months is that the, the Oireachtas, the Parliament Committee that's been established to look at the deliberation, the outcome of the Citizens' Assembly on abortion, that they, they don't just put those uh, recommendations to one side. I hope they engage in a, a considered debate about the detail of those recommendations. And I think that's the best way to use the Citizens' Assembly as an, an, a bolt-on it's in addition to our representative system of, of government, not a replacement. There seems to be a political disconnect all over the Western world for the traditional political parties. And this is an, it's, a, it's a new layer of democracy. Oh, you can't have too much democracy. So this is a, this is a new layer. And democracy should, see, should, be, well, should, it should be an expression of the will of the people. <laughs> right? So we think here we're an expression of the will of the people. Democracy is um, just representing people's views, representing what's going on on the ground in, in people's lives, taking it into Parliament and fixing it. That's the idea. Isn't that it? There's a huge ground for optimism. We see citizens' assemblies happening all over the world. We see constitutional change happening, you know, in places like Iceland, where they did a constitutional, uh, a kind of crowdsourced constitution. We see a lot of software popping up uh, to help people make decisions uh, democratically, like liquid democracy, for example. Um, so we have actually great possibilities. Right now we're, we're getting a sense around the world and in Ireland that uh, politicians get into power and they're just a bit condescending or contrarian. They know better than you. They know how things work. Uh, can't you just let them get on with it? No, this is our society. This is our democracy. 
all we want is to make decisions together. It's it's not it's considered a radical idea, democracy, but it's you wouldn't think it's asking for much. The battle will be over. The battle will be over. There will be no more. The battle will be over. There will be no more. The battle will be over.